Hello lads and lasses, my name is Catalyst and you are watching the current Elden Ring speedrun world record in the All Remembrances category. I will be post commentating over the most important parts of the run to elaborate on the strategies, glitches and exploits utilized, while also talking about the logic behind the preparation and routing process. I hope this enhances your enjoyment of the speedrun and allows you to better understand it if you have never seen a run like this before. Let me first explain what All Remembrances actually means. The goal of this category is to collect all the Remembrance items from the 15 main bosses that drop them and then complete the game by reaching the credits. There are also some other fights which I need to complete that do not drop a Remembrance but are going to be in the way. This speedrun has no limitations except for disallowing the infamous zipping glitch, meaning that it is going to be one of the most broken showcases of what Elden Ring speedrunning has to offer. If you prefer glitchless speedruns, that is what I'm currently working on on my stream so you can expect a similar video covering it in the future. Because I want to have as many tools available to me as possible, I'm performing this run on the 1.02 patch of the game, that is the patch the PC release came with. It allows me to utilize strategies which have since been changed or completely removed from the game, primarily the pizza swap, the wrong warp and the pegasus glitch. This trio forms the holy trinity of the speedrun. When I'm post commentating on the run, you will see a small microphone icon overlaying my webcam. This icon is absent when you can hear my live reactions instead. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's get started. I choose to start as a samurai with the Crimson Umber Medallion as my keepsake. The keepsake is mostly irrelevant for this run, so I might as well at least get the small health point increase. The samurai on the other hand is very important. It starts with both a weapon that has a stance on it, that being a skill which you can continuously hold and it stays active, in this case it's the unsheath on the Uchigatana. And it has a bow as well, which I can use to perform the first trick of the run, the bow cancel. Bow cancels have me wield the bow in the right hand and then two-handing it while mid-air. With proper timing, which is pretty much unique for every single drop that I will be doing, it is possible to completely skip the otherwise slow landing animation. Bow cancels also prevent any stamina drain from the landing while in combat. It's not a big time save individually, but it adds up to probably 10 seconds over the course of the entire run, if not more. Another movement technique is jumping uphill. Anytime I run up a slope or a set of stairs, I will be continuously jumping while making sure that I block for a brief period of time between each jump. This allows me to bypass the jump cooldown timer where the player is forced into small hops if jumping repeatedly. This way of moving is slightly faster than simply sprinting, provided that I'm out of combat and enjoy infinite stamina. After taking the first grace, so I can come back there later, I'm now proceeding to obtain torrent and continue towards Liurnia. Games are making more money than they ever have, how would that fix anything? Making the games more expensive. I make sure to activate the grace from at least a 45 degree angle so that my character has to turn around to face it first. During this turn it is possible to save and quit or open the map. This time I choose to open the map and fast travel to this grace. In some cases there is no stand up animation after an area reload so I can skip the rest of the lighting animation without any time loss. Because I rest so fast the game doesn't even have time to properly load and ends up glitching out the first half of the dialogue with Melina. It doesn't cause anything bad, but looks pretty funny. Anyways, this turnaround grace shot will be used in multiple places of the run. Several times and still, you know, it released in such a fucked up state. It must be internally very frustrating to work on a game for years and then have to release it in such a broken ass state knowing that people are not going to be happy. It's like, you know, the fucking developers, they want to make good games. They're, they don't want to make shitty games. The Stormhill Shag Grace is taken to be come back to later, but also to abuse it for one of the most important glitches throughout the run. But I'll get to that. Instead, I need to talk about another bread and butter glitch of the speedrun that is coming right up. The Pegasus. Before it was cut out during development, there existed a possibility to summon Torrent without needing to be in the saddle. This state was still achievable in the final product. By jumping off the horse and quickly quitting out to the main menu, it is possible to have the game register me jumping off, but the horse not being dismissed. This way, when I return back into the game, 
Torrent will be spawning right next to me. This is what we call Torrent Storage. With Torrent stored, he will always appear next to me after a quit out until I summon him. This can be abused by placing myself close to an edge of a platform. With a proper setup, after loading back in, the horse will not be treated with respect and instead get yeeted off the cliff. Under most cliffs, there will be a kill plane that is supposed to kill the player when they themselves fall down. However, forcing Torrent to die this way has an unintended consequence. When any entity goes through such a kill plane, it has its gravity disabled until it is reloaded. This usually causes no problems, but Torrent is an NPC that I can then respawn using one of my flask charges instead of having to reload the game entirely. As such, gravity for the horse remains disabled and when I mount it, I can fly. This is an extremely important mechanic for the speedrun and will be abused to cut down the time necessary to traverse the otherwise massive lands between. It is relatively easy to gain height while flying because all I need to do is scale up some geometry. Losing height on the contrary is more complicated. The only time I can dismount the horse is if I'm standing on the ground and the best way to do that is to jump. That allows me to lose at least some height but the ground needs to be close enough to land on it otherwise I will be suspended in the air which is no good as the only way to fix that is to either let the game kill me or reload and respawn back on my last stable position before flight. In most cases then, I'm going to make sure that I do not get so much height that would prevent me from landing back on some ground plane. Now that I can fly, I will continue to the Divine Tower of Liurnia because it has the Curse Mark of Death which needs to be collected to make 40 sacks accessible. The item is normally locked behind Rani's questline but it's actually always spawned meaning I can just fly up to the tower and pick it up. This is the perfect time to do it as I'm both close and already have the Pegasus glitch active. I also want to clarify the current early goal of the route. I need to get to the Volcano Manor as fast as possible in order to pick up the Serpent Hunter which will be the weapon used for the speedrun. The fastest way to do this is to enter the Raya Lucaria Academy and get abducted at the bottom of the water wheel. Of course they fucking do. Because they want to have more profits, better margins. That's all it's about. Yeah, exactly, Dan. Because that's what globalization enables, and <laughs> we are not getting rid of globalization. Uh, I mean, it's not total bullshit. Uh, I remember my dad when we got the PS2 and he bought some of the first original games. Uh, they had a label on them for the price, and it was actually more like what now would be like 80, 85 bucks, I guess. So I guess it depended on where and stuff, but yeah. Turns out money is better than less money, yeah. What's up, Charlie? And I mean, microtransactions, don't get me wrong, it depends on exactly what they are. I'm not saying that the concept itself is bad. It's just that right now they are the main source of revenue for any company that is focused on them, which is most. So changing the base price of a game isn't really gonna do shit. You also see me reload the game on this doorway. This is because in order to ensure the fairest possible competition, the speedrun is timed using the in-game time which cuts out all of the loading screens. This way people with inferior machines and slower loading times are not disadvantaged. It does, however, mean that some animations are better skipped by reloading the game, such as opening this tower door. And Dishonored has a DLC, and with one of the DLCs you basically get a bunch of items in your kinda safe house. But pretty much everyone has that DLC. And you have a filter on the leaderboards, whether you're using it or not. So you get like a couple of extra resources earlier in the run. And then Tomb Raider 2013 does have a DLC where you can pay to have roll from the start of the game. It's pretty funny seeing that in a... You know, in a context of playing a FromSoft game, fucking imagine. But you can pay a little bit of money to have a roll from the start of the game. 
or you can level it up later on. And the thing with the roll is that it's the fastest way to move and it also enables some clips that are faster than without it. They're doable even without it, but they're quicker. So you basically have... Uh, after speaking to Melina to go to the round table hold, which needs to be done at least once before being allowed to enter Lanedell, I will perform the second glitch of the Holy Trinity, the Wrong Warp. Eating the watermelon, love watermelons, watermelons are good if they're good. Following my rest at the table, I activate the Memory of Grace item which warps me to my last grace. At the same time, I also open the map and just before the first warp is finished, trigger another warp to a different grace using the fast travel system. With two warps activated simultaneously, the game knows which area to warp me to, that is the grace I selected, but loses track of which spawn point within the area to use and instead defaults to the first one on its internal list through a failsafe routine. This particular spawn point is close to the purified ruins where I want to take the teleporter to the academy. The usefulness of specific wrong warp locations is therefore determined by where the failsafe or default spawn point is located. Like in this day and age, you're gonna probably have them because whenever you purchase, the DLC will probably be included. Now, to enter the academy, I must acquire the academy glintstone key, and as I do that, I also activate the Temple Quarter's Grace to come back to later. Because companies do not stop innovating, they do not stop looking for new sources of income. For new sources of profits. Even without it... More and more people are playing games. That means more and more people are paying those 60 bucks than they used to in the past. So there's no argument I can, I can hold that LMS microtransactions were actually... Lives. Hope you are doing well. That were actually forced. And even without them being forced, they would happen anyway. Because it's a way for companies to make money. Someone would try it out, figure out that, oh, if it wasn't Bethesda, it would be someone else. Oh, I put horse armor into my game, which is dumb as fuck and people ridicule me, yet I still sell hundreds of thousands of them to players. Yeah, that makes sense then. That the free-to-play model indeed, which... Would have been generated with mobile games anyways, so... Now entering the academy, I take the grace because I'll be, yet again, coming back later, even multiple times. And then I perform a pretty neat setup to try and store Torrent and throw him into a kill plane in just one save and quit. This is obviously faster than having to do it in two reloads. And indeed, I am doing well, how about you? Thank you, thank you for the luck. But yeah, I, I disagree with that take completely. And uh, hold up. I fucking run Dark Souls 1, which basically... If you want to run on bosses, you need a DLC. Now it's bundled on PC, but still. With this Pegasus, I can navigate around the academy instead of going through, and thus get to the Volcano Manor much quicker. DS2 or, or DS3, you need to have the DLCs to be able to run all bosses. It's gonna be like that with Elden Ring as well, for all remembrances, probably. Hey, has that Jim? Thank you so much for the Prime! Welcome! To the Reset City family, enjoy the 23 plus of animated emotes that come along with it, thank you! Hope you're having a great day today. Yeah, the horse armor debacle was a debacle in terms of PR, but in terms of sales and money made, it was a fucking groundbreaking moment.
After being abducted, I am now in a trapped state, meaning I cannot warp until I rest at a grace. Because I want to wrong warp within this area, the goal is now to get to the closest grace as fast as possible. From there, I am actually going to complicate the wrong warp a little bit. And no Tao, I'm sorry to hear that you're not doing too well, and I hope whatever is troubling you gets better as soon as possible. I mean, saying that it's not profitable is... Like, what is that based on? How has From Software made games without microtransactions for the most part? Unless you count additional DLCs. Which... The way they are priced, I highly doubt that they are super... Uh... Earlier, I mentioned the Stormhill Shack Grace will be abused for the wrong warp. And this is the first instance. After resting at the Grace, I activate the Memory of Grace and warp to Stormhill using the map. This triggers the wrong warp there. But the default spawn point for that area is out of bounds, so I simply start falling and thus the game cannot update my character's coordinates. After reloading the game, however, the game will spawn me back in the original area where I had my coordinates stored properly, yet once again lose track of which spawn point to use and spawn me at the front of the Volcano Manor instead. This is a combination of a map wrong warp to the Stormhill Shack, followed by an unstable ground wrong warp caused by spawning midair. It allows me to wrong warp within the area that I'm currently located in, without the need to warp to it specifically. It's super useful because not every area has a beneficial default spawn point, and even less areas have a grace that I could wrong warp to, but with this I can wrong warp anywhere I want. Nice! My horse. Even though I can imagine it pre being pretty hard when half the company is gone. After all this info, I have another bombshell glitch for you. This time, the pizza swap. Those that have seen my dedicated video on the glitch should be familiar with it, but I will do my best to give a concise summary here as well. Essentially, the pizza swap is activated by using a stance on a weapon that is under normal conditions not supposed to have it. This is achieved by activating a stance on a regular weapon, that's why I need the Uchi, followed by a pivot, a small 180 degree turnaround executed by facing away from an enemy and then locking onto it. During this pivot, and with extremely precise inputs, it is possible to swap out the currently wielded equipment. In this case, I will swap the Uchi Gatana for the Serpent Hunter. Now, because the Serpent Hunter has no information concerning a stance attack, the game presumably defaults to the first stance on its internal list. By extraordinary luck, this default stance is the Giza's wheel stance, which hits repeatedly in quick succession. My Serpent Hunter can thus deal extreme amounts of DPS, but that's not all. During this pizza swap state, the damage and hitbox properties are drawn from the Serpent Hunter L2 attack, because that is the button that I am holding. It will result in, well, just see for yourselves. Which... Should be pretty easy to do under two hours. But this is basically all you do. Exclamation mark pizza swap, I just made a video about it. It works pretty... Okay, I can... Uh, it's, it's awful that I lost 6 seconds, but I'll continue, whatever. I'm not gonna reset now. After this destruction of the First Lord and acquisition of the First Remembrance, the goal is to enter Landell as soon as possible. This, however, needs me to kill another Lord. In order to make that faster, I will also upgrade my Serpent Hunter, but not before going back to Stormhill to pick up the Devour Scepter of Bernal's corpse. Bernal dies in a shack if he's not interacted with before Rykard is slain. The scepter is a necessary component for a massive skip later on, and this is a good time to obtain it. Commission mark pizza swap is a command that explains it. 
Also links my video. Yeah, pretty much. Stati. That is what the run has become. Running on the horse and then shooting bosses down with a Serpent Hunter. A cool little trick I do here is to jump on the chest before opening it. This skips the opening animation and I can pick up the item quicker. Well, the biggest thing is that basically if you increase the price of the game and everything, most of that would actually go to the execs. Because yeah, devs are underpaid, but I mean that's not gonna it's not gonna change. That's why you need labor unions and shit like that, because every single capitalist's motivation is to pay their employees as low as possible until they, you know, get to the point of quitting. You need to keep them up right be uh, right above that, essentially. And the devs get paid before the game sells. Here, I map wrong war back to the four belfries to get close to Ichi and level the Serpent Hunter to plus four. Like, no, there's definitely something to say, which is that, indeed, like, another Call of Duty is probably a much lower risk. Nowadays, and just releasing another Call of Duty game. But, of course, they're not gonna forego the money that they've already been making. It's very easy to start giving yourself more money, it's a lot harder to take that money away. Hey, this is a game about medieval fights, except this run basically makes it... ...a little example of if, what, if, what happens if you take a machine gun to the medieval times. <coughs> <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I guess in a way, the thing is... You still have to get people who are gonna make a decent game. And since developers do change quite a bit, I mean, there's a reason that, you know... Call of Duties have been developed by, like, Infinity Ward and then Treyarch and... Choo -choo -choo -choo. It's kind of funny that I'm even considering... I lost six seconds on right card, and we had the freaking cross leg animation as well this run. Then Rocco stays the same, gonna do a job of four people at the moment, at the same time I get my shit done. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying, so... I hope it doesn't get too stressful. And I hope you get extra pay, which you probably don't. Unless you have to do overtime. But yeah, mainly stay healthy and then mentally healthy as well from all that work. Gorgic's AI is connected to the fog gate, and because I enter the arena from out of bounds, his AI never activates and I get a free kill. One more thing I need to mention about the pizza swap is that I'm repeatedly mashing forwards on my controller while mowing the enemies down. This continuously puts my character into an idle state, out of which the wind up for the next damage take of the swap is considerably shorter. It represents about a 30% DPS increase and is absolutely crucial to kill some of the latter bosses on time, before they can touch me. The technique is called W Tech. Another thing you might have noticed is that I was able to kill Godric from a decent distance. 
Well, this is because during the pizza swap, the game fetches the default state of the newly swapped weapon, which for the Serpent Hunter is the form inside of Rykard's fight. That's right, it means that I possess the Serpent Hunter's massive hitbox even outside of that encounter. You see why pizza swap is so broken now? After killing two separate lords, I can now go to Lanedell. The fastest way to do this is through Nokron, because it also has a remembrance boss that we can kill on the way. In order to skip running there, and also to leave Radan for later, I use the teleporter at the Belfries to enter Nokron's preview area. From there, I can perform a wrong warp and spawn right in front of the Mimic. But people always try to simplify things, because simplifying things makes events understandable to the human brain. Oh, that was good. Good death animation didn't... I wasn't late at all to the fog. <clears throat> Well, I think what he's trying to say is that the investors are taking a pretty big risk when they make a game. In most cases. The problem is that when a game does really well, the developers don't get anything out of that, right? If they're unfairly paid during the development process, because they're being paid up front, obviously, since they need to be like paying their bills and living while the game's being developed before it actually starts making money, then it can be fucked up, yeah. Because out of those extreme profits, when the game does sell well, they don't see shit. It's like when, when people say, I'm not gonna... I'm, I wouldn't buy this game, but I'm gonna buy it so that the developers make money. No, the developers have already been paid. When the game comes out. Any Babylon's Fallen Joyers? Isn't that game shutting down in like the next two weeks or something? <laughs> I think it was completely doomed right from the release, dude. Like, I think uh, it released on day one. It was basically obvious it was gonna die, yeah. I don't really think that games nowadays are worse than back in the days. You probably always have a bias because you think about, you know, some of the best games that you've played in the past. Forgetting all that shit that came out that was terrible. Just like these days, you have good games and you have bad games. A bunch of it is, of course, nostalgia as well. Lower standards, stuff like that. Not that I'm aware of, Silent Player. I mean, I think it's beneath, so you would always die from fall damage anyways. Yeah, I only remember the good ones, exactly. Like, I do think there's a, there's a bias in that, yeah. What do you do if you get the puke opener? Uh, if you get the puke opener, you just... Pizza swap and kill it from midair. Like, if you do it fast enough and don't fail it, then... Moose doesn't have enough time to actually get, you know, too far or anything like that. And that too, yeah, you just generally have a lot more games.
Yeah, but like, I, I mean, stuff like Half-Life 2. I mean, it has its problems. It is very much, it's a great game, but rose tinted glasses are definitely fucking up a lot of people's perception of that game. Like, think about, you know, stuff like Breath of the Wild and whatnot. Those, at some point, are also going to be remembered in pretty much the same way. Entering the coffin here to reach the deeper depths, I never actually go through a loading screen, meaning that I get to keep the Pegasus glitch into the next area. Hey Patrick, what's up dude? And so, like, I don't know, StarCraft 2 was pretty damn rad as well, for example. Think about games like The Witcher 3, that's also going to be remembered. As a legendary game, even though it has a lot of problems, but the game only released in like 2015. It's, it's gonna take some time for it to gain nostalgia value. On Fias Champions, I try to position myself behind the NPCs to force out a faster death animation. I don't know, I I mean, of course that's your personal opinion and that's fine. But you're basically selecting the best of the best games of the past and then clumping all AAA games from nowadays together. Like, you know how many fucking games that are AAA get released every year? If you take just the best of the best of the past five years, you end up with some fucking, in, like, an insane lineup of games as well. That last wave took forever. The way Bethesda tried to be a true single player games publisher was having a strong lineup of quality games that couldn't be successful money wise, and when they ended up being bold, Microsoft can be an example that it's not easy to sell games. Ah. Uh... Now that I'm in Landell, the next steps would normally be killing more gods and then proceeding to the mountain tops of the giants. However, after Morgoth's fight, it is necessary to rest at a grace and talk to Melina, which is slow. There's nevertheless a way to skip this. She won't appear again after talking to her at the forge for, well, obvious reasons. So let's try to delay Morgoth until after that, it will save about 12 seconds. But how can I continue without the rolled medallion? That is simple, because Miyazaki's got her back. The default location for the area of the Grand Lift of Rolled is actually on its top position. Using Pegasus, we used to run towards the elevator and then wrong work from there. But then we found out that there is a piece of stable ground on the mountain outside of it. And so I will instead run towards it, touch the ground there and wrong warp afterwards. This method surprisingly saves around 25 seconds over pathing to the elevator. Yeah, like think about Red Dead 2, right? For some, Red Dead 2 is the best Rockstar game ever. Think about even things like God of War. Hey, Chad Watcher, what's up, dude? Love that name. I'm doing good today. How about you? How's your Wednesday? Welcome, welcome. Yo, what's up, Schubert? Thank you, thank you for the luck. How you doing, man? Yeah, doesn't mean the run is good, though. Run is not very good, but it's okay. We, uh, it's alive, so that's what matters. Yeah, runs red, so runs dead.
Like, think about something like Metal Gear Rising. It's another, like, absolutely insane title in its own genre. That has hardly been matched since. Another thing you have to consider is that, like... Games like Warcraft 3, like, it was, you know... Obviously, the generational leap was much bigger back then, because there was much more room to grow. It's much more difficult right now, like, I mean, you look at, you know, some PS3 and PS4 games, they look the same. You look at PS4 and PS5, like, yeah, there can be differences, but are they really that big? Is Sabawa possible? No. Yeah, okay, what's up, Selecao? I'll get Rising so good, dude. It's pretty funny also how it was developed, where basically half of the game was made by KJP, Kojima Productions, and then they had to scrap it and basically make the whole game anew when they uh, gave it to Platinum. I'll take the Zamo Ruins Grace and drop around the kill plane on a rock, which the game considers to be part of the consecrated snowfields. Wrong warping from there allows me to enter the snowfield without the need of the Halic Tree Medallion, skipping both Commander Neol and running to the Albinauric Village. In the snowfield, I will take a grace for later and then proceed towards Mogwin Palace. Yeah, Platinum are really good. It's just the new Bayonetta's coming to fucking switch 30 FPS, dude, let's go. I mean, 76. 76 was a huge problem because of... Like, the game, at first, fucking kept on uninstalling itself and shit like that. You know, the game was like 70 gigs or something like that. There were a lot of problems at the launch. I mean, Dan is absolutely right here, actually. Think about, like, fucking Deus Ex, right? Like, I mean, Deus Ex... Human Revolution... Most people will remember it as a pretty solid game. I wouldn't mind playing another one. I mean, even after Mankind Divided, right? Especially because Mankind Divided actually improved a lot of the problems that Human Revolution had. Problem is that it was too short. I have fond memories of that game. But... It sold like shit. It didn't sell well. Why do you think there's no more Deus Ex anymore? Here, I will purposely get killed to exploit the position of the stake of Marika. Not only do I spawn closer to where I need to go, but also completely avoid triggering the Anastasia invader, who would prevent me from mounting my horse. Third attempt today, so that's kind of nice. First attempt finished, second attempt got at least a few as champs. Oh, nice stand-up animation. No, Prey is another one that sold poorly. Partially probably because of the name. Because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing like the original Prey. Just like Deus Ex is not really like the original Deus Ex. And also because immersive sims are just problematic to sell. There will be people who love them, but the mass markets doesn't like them as much. Immersive Simulator is stuff like Deus Ex, like Prey and, and whatnot. That's what Immersive Simulator is. How long do you think you'll still speed on Elden Ring all remembrances until I get a decent time? When that happens, I don't know. I'm gonna save like, I don't know, like at least 20 seconds or something. Something like that. If I can get a PB like that, then I'll be done with all remembrances. Well, regular all remembrances. I'll probably do all remembrances glitchless.
What do you mean start something meaningful? I mean just meaningfully converse with us and then food will be here in no time. It's not an RPG. RPG elements are part of an immersive simulator, as in leveling up things and getting new gadgets and stuff like that. It's not on the leaderboards because no one's run it. But hey, be the change you want to see. Oh, you piece of shit. Okay. <laughs> nice try, Moog. Nice try. Kata's gym to leak his future version of his nudes. The fuck? I actually haven't played Mankind Divided. I've only played Human Revolution. Now to cross the mountaintops. This area is huge, but it's actually designed to lead the players from area A to area B and then back to area A except at a different altitude. I can exploit it using the Pegasus glitch and scaling up some rocks. There's a catch though. Since all the mountains above me can normally be dropped from, the entire area near the cliffs is covered by death planes, which would instantly kill me upon touch. I therefore need to perform a very precise skip where I gain just enough height to stay under the kill plane, then slightly backtrack, jump through a hole in the planes and land on a branch just above them. Then I need some extra height to be able to scale all the way up to the mountain. So obviously games like that are going to be limited in reach. I mean some of the most profitable games are fucking mobile games, right? So like that tells you everything you need to know. I do think Blizzard's making most of their money and they have all the fucking Call of Duties and shit. It's fucking Candy Crush. Nice. Well, if John was still here, he would have seen... How it looks like when you get just singular hit and not actually straight up killed. Let's trying out new builds. Well, I'm glad that you're getting so much casual enjoyment out of the game. Feels clunky at times. Sure does. I enjoyed it at the time. I mean, for me, gaming depends a lot on the mood. And I guess back when I played it, I just really was in a mood for a game like that. I personally enjoyed it a lot more than something like Cyberpunk, for example. Well, they broke the tree, but it was too late, so that's nice. Rule level 1 is a great, great challenge run, casually. You also have a lot of options in this game. How to gain more power. No AOE opener, that's really good. an alright split. I mean, it's not over yet. I still need to get on the forge. Freemium is very much... Uh, that is an industry term. I mean, yeah, microtransactions, like I said, they... Make the bulk, we told- that's how this fucking entire conversation started, remember? I mean, it was at the beginning of this run, 
Which is, you know, 35 minutes ago. Maybe even the previous run, for all I know, but... That's how the whole thing started. That changing the base price of a game isn't gonna fix everything. Hey, what's up, Chatty? How you doing? Well, it's because the motherfucker just has billions and billions of health points. Hey, Tabs, how you doing, dude? What's up? Yeah, ad spots are also important. That is for sure true. Because they're all straight up scams so you get an ad for a game somewhere. You click on it, download it, and the game is nothing like was advertised. And the only reason they want you to get it is because you download it, they hit you with seven ads, and then you're gonna delete it, but you've already seen, like, a bunch of ads. Now that I'm in Fire Missoula, I'm once again in a trapped state, so I need to rest at a grace. This is actually perfect, because I still do not have the last necessary piece to perform the massive skip here. As such, I will run towards the Dragon Temple grace, rest there, and come back later. That was a really nice Fire Giant split. Nice floaty jump. I wasn't there when the conversation started, so it didn't happen. I mean, in your reality, it didn't. Yeah, that's it's not wrong. Social constructivism and all. Um... I mean, for sure. Uh, when it comes to the microtransactions, obviously. But another thing is that... It's much fucking easier to go ahead and... Make an in-app purchase... When it's like three bucks and the only thing you have to do is you click click and you get your points immediately. Right? If you buy a game, well not only are you paying 60 bucks up front, but you need to download the game and wait for it to like patch and shit. That's not the case there. Like they get you, you know, to pay like fucking 80 cents on the first sale. So you have to confirm your card. And then once you confirm it, you don't have to do that again. There's a lot of consumer psychology that goes into the mobile market. I mean, with Diablo Immortal being, you know, basically the peak of monetization. Wouldn't surprise me if that game was studied at, like, consumer psychology university classes. Well, most people are not like that, Copy. Just because you don't do it. Let's now clean up some of the remembrances that I left behind. First will be Renala, followed by Radan. Because I need to rest again before fighting Radan, I want to get as many runes as possible so that I can do the second and final level up of the run. Just like the first one, all points will go towards strength to boost my damage as the Serpent Hunter has an A scaling in this stat. Is that a cancel mobile games? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, think about what the ads that you might see on your mobile apps fucking look like. It's usually some kind of bullshit that you're like... No one would fucking ever play this, but it works. There's a reason that these things are put up there. And of course, for the gigabyte internet, that's not really a problem, but most people who fucking game on mobile do not have gigabyte internets or good enough PCs. And even then, you have to wait a little bit before the game is accessible to you. While an in-app purchase happens instantly, you instantly have your feedback.
Let's hope I don't fuck up on Ranala this time. Hey, C5, it's going all right. How about you? Only the third attempt. Finished the 101 42 earlier, so that's kind of nice. Hey, welcome back, Limey. I mean, run exists, so we'll see how it goes. Like Pornhub. I mean, if you have a site that you know you're going to be using for a long time, it makes sense. Yeah, it's because of Pegasus. Commission mark Pegasus. I mean, yeah, of course, both Apple and Google take a cut, but I mean, if you're playing a mobile game, <laughs> it's not like you really have an option. But yeah, for like Twitch, for example, that is very true. Second, so bank down. I should generate free one-time use credit cards. I really like that feature. Well, I don't have any credit cards. I only have debit. But... I guess it doesn't really matter um, for that. That is kind of nice, but it's even more of a hassle, right? It's like, okay, dude, I'm paying 80 cents here. I don't really want to go through all this shit. I don't want to... Quit my app that I'm playing right now to go generate an extra card and typing the info. No, most people are gonna be like, yeah, Google, keep my fucking info in Google Pay and then... Easy clap purchases. Gonna try to do Deathless Dark Souls 1 remastered run? Well, good luck, that's pretty much doable. Oh yeah, I'm not saying that, I'm just saying that your regular user that gets home from work from the 9 to 5 job and games a little bit in the evening. Or in the morning. Depends. Like my dad, he's just gonna not care about that. And that's how you design your shit. You design for the median user. You design <clears throat> for the average user. Even though there are a lot of games that, you know, are just uh, sustained by the whales. You have a couple of people who are spending incredible amounts of money. That's why you always make that option. Because you never know who's gonna start playing your game. You always make the options. Of where you can pay a lot of money for either some kind of a distinct advantage or just skins or whatever. Now to get to Radan, I will run warp from a very specific area. It's quite interesting because around the rocks I warp from, there is actually a border of three separate map regions. So I need to ensure that I'm standing in the right place. This run warp puts me out of bounds, but near Radan's arena, allowing me to simply respawn at the stake of Marika after death. Those who are willing to spend a lot of money, and those who are actually just playing for free. And they're being beaten by these people that are spending money, you know what I mean? So it can be a delicate balance. Another thing with Diablo Immortal that is fucking evil is the fact that the game is like actually pretty good. For what it is. Like it's the gameplay and everything is fun. I haven't played it myself, but like I've seen a bunch of it. So you have a mobile game that's not like, you know, fucking You have a mobile MMO that isn't like turn based, you know, boring snooze fest. Well, 
it is evil because it means that more people are going to be willing to pay money, obviously, and get hooked up in the incredibly awful predatory monetization model that they have employed. After we're done, it is time to finally clean up Morgoth, but all the Morgoth fans might be disappointed. Instead of pizza swapping him, I will use a completely different technique. First, I activate Pegasus and proceed to fly around Langdell's outer wall. Several bonfires or graces in this game... ...whose area... ...whose area's first spawn point on its internal list will be like out of bounds and stuff like that. And so if you can find one where you can be out of bounds but not die... ...to like a kill box or whatever... You can abuse it for an unstable ground wrong warp. I don't know why. Uh, it could be... They just didn't give a shit. Like, you know, there was a spawn point somewhere at some point. They might have moved it by accident. Like, clearly they're not really using it as a failsafe anymore, considering that... Uh, so many spawn points that are first on the list, on the internal list, are broken. Not all of them usable for map, uh, for unstable ground wrong work, but a lot of them are broken, yeah, like you spawn out of bounds somewhere, or... I make sure to jump on this platform and slowly walk off of it so the game stores my position as close to the edge as possible. I then quit out to deactivate Pegasus, but because Lanedale won't initially load, I'll spawn midair. From there, I spirit spring jump forwards into the wall to load Lanedale again, and then immediately turn 90 degrees to the left. This way, I start falling under the map without landing on any other platform which would force me off the horse, and also avoid any kill planes. Now, normally, there is a 12 second timer that ticks down when the player is suspended in the air after which they are killed, but it is possible to reset this timer by attacking. The player alone can only attack once while in the air, however it is possible to attack repeatedly while on Torrent's back. This allows me to fall as far as I want to, which is far enough to deload the area above me. Guess who doesn't have a horse to continually reset the fall timer? That's right, Morgoth. When the area deloads, the boss starts falling and 12 seconds later ends up being dead. Release a good game. You're not going to be successful when you just release a good game. Marketing is a huge part of it as well. Most of the game's budgets, the big games, actually, like, a lot of it goes to marketing. And... That is, you know, like, you can have a great game, but if no one's gonna fucking see it and play it because you haven't sold it to them, I mean, sold the idea of them buying it, then doesn't really matter. Now I can finally get to 40 sacks by giving Fiat the curse mark of death I picked up all the way at the start of the run. Yeah, I mean, there are countries here in the EU where even like, you know, uh, betting with channel points doesn't work here on Twitch. So, definitely. And already at least there's some regulation where, you know, any loot box basically needs to have a website. Like, they need to have a page on their website that shows you the exact percentages of what you can actually obtain. Like, what is the chance to obtain X and what is the chance to obtain Y and stuff like that. On each loot box that you buy. But yeah, we talked about it earlier. Uh, because we talked about Twitch and gambling, so it's kind of related. Um, this is like Belgium on the Netherlands, basically. Certain games are not allowed to come out, or they have to strip out their loot box features. Talking about Genshin. I haven't played Genshin. I guess the thing with Genshin is that it's also a pretty good game on its own. But I feel like Diablo Immortal is probably even worse when it comes to the monetization. Skip to China. <laughs> nah, just killing Morgoth. can respawn immediately. <laughs> it's like you could farm these runes and level up or you could pay for this level up. It's 
It's like Melina, you have to wait for Melina to arrive to the grace if you want to level up. But if you... Oof, that was close. But if you pay for her transport, then she's gonna show up immediately. Yeah, yeah, Adamantris, that's what I said. That I wouldn't be surprised if that game was studied at, like, consumer psychology classes in, at universities. After 40, it is time to head over to Astel. But since when is Astel in Lyurnia? Well, Lake of Rot, where he resides, is definitely not in Lyurnia, but it is located underneath it, and this is what I will exploit. After Astel, there is an elevator leading to the Moonlight Altar. I'm now directly beneath this altar and will fly out of bounds to touch a piece of collision which will load the elevator shaft. Then, I stand on a piece of stable ground of the shaft and wrong warp down directly in front of Astel's arena. There I'm actually hoping for the hand swipe opener which would save around 3.5 seconds over the tail slam. When it comes to, you know, just look at the, uh... Look at what Google did in Spain, for example, right? So yeah, you're absolutely right. But that's where... That's where also the lobby is the strongest in, in places like the US, in markets that actually matter. It's paid to make Torin fly? No, I just got a down patch. Huh? Huh? Imagine FromSoft patching out glitches and they're like, yeah, you can actually unlock this glitch if you pay this small fee of 333. <laughs> uh, hello, Promano. This run is one of the most broken showcases you will ever see in Elden Ring. So, yeah, you do not do any regular fights in this cursed category. But... After I reach my goal in this category, I will want to route all remembrances glitchless, so it should be more fun. And the reason Morgoth dies there is basically you fall so far under the map, so the map deloads. And then Morgoth, you know, falls for 12 seconds and the kill timer kills him. The fall kill timer. While I, because I'm falling on the horse, I can repeatedly attack and each attack actually delays the kill timer. There were a lot of good game releases. We were literally just talking about that at Fias Champs this run. But that was the opinion that games used to be so much better back in the days. Depends on what you mean by recently, obviously. Well, RPG is kind of, you know, wide genre. Elden Ring is an RPG. I think it's pretty good. <laughs> Pay for it. Or you could just introduce easy mode like Steel Rising. Damn good Astel, what the fuck? Even though I ran a bit too far away. And that's lost a little bit of time, yeah. Didn't kill him as fast. There are two places I can go to right now. Farmazula and the Halic Tree. I purposely left these as the last because Halic Tree is needed in order to proceed with Farm because it has the last remaining piece of the puzzle for the big skip. So let's head over there now. Uh, they would say, there will be, there will be, there will be camps that would say that beating the game with microtransactions doesn't count. But there would also be a camp that will say that beating them without it doesn't count. I mean, think about summons, dude. You have people saying, oh, you're not using summons. You're not fucking playing the game as intended. Why are you not using summons? And then you have people, if you use summons, they're like, why are you using summons, you pussy? Oh, how about God of War? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly what George is saying. It's pretty much... That is the... Just 
elitist fan base that you have with FromSoft games? You can play the game however you fucking want. That, that's the thing. It's completely fine to like not use a resource if the game gives it to you for whatever reason. It's also completely fine to use that resource. The thing is that these games have generated this, uh, you know... They have generated this, this reputation that they're hard and for hardcore gamers. So people that finish them feel like, you know, they've accomplished something, they've overcome adversity. And you're making it easier for yourself so you are not as worthy, obviously. That, that's a totally shitty fucking perspective. That doesn't make any sense. It's like when you have MMORPGs. And the player's already in the end game, you know. They don't want the early game experience to be better for the new players because, holy shit, I've had to go through this, you know, shitty stuff. So you have to do it too. It's like you don't deserve to play the good part of the game until you go through the hard stuff. Completely stupid. I also really enjoy how there are more and more bugs flying in. I should really put the net, the window net from my uh, bedroom, I should put it to the window here. Since this is where I have the window open till late and lights on and everything. Yeah, now there's a fucking small mosquito sitting on my chat. Very nice. Welcome, mosquito. How's it going? Thanks for the luck. Instead of running around the Halleck tree, I want to perform a very cool skip that lets me go down directly to Loretta. Unfortunately, I will need assistance from an enemy, and relying on enemy AI is never a fun experience. I'll try to lure the Misbegotten close to the elevator shortcut, block one of his attacks, follow up with a guard counter, break his poise, and then riposte just as I'm about to fall off the platform. This way, the riposte animation stays active for the entire duration of the fall, and because the animation grants me full invincibility, I can avoid the fall damage. I immediately quit out to skip the rest of the animation, and also to reset the battle mage behind me. Rip candles. See, you, you do get to do cool stuff in this run. Besides just shooting bosses to death. Stop synthetic go. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of funny that this uh, attitude around the community still exists, considering, like, how many fucking copies Elden Ring sold. Like, clearly this was a, you know, big... In terms of gaming, mainstream affair. Like, this is not a niche anymore. Fucking almost everybody knows Souls and FromSoft. It's not a small elite club anymore. Here in Elfal, I can abuse another cool glitch where instead of running all the way around through the drainage channel, I instead drop onto the massive elevator shortcut. My character dies, but her corpse pushes the button at the bottom of the elevator, activating the shortcut. This way, I can simply run back from the prayer room grace and go directly to Malenia. Triple approaches to the game. Play it however you want. A good RPG build is supposed to make you progress fast? <sighs> I mean... Good RPG build, because it's a role-playing game, a good RPG build should be... Staying true to whatever role you're playing. Playing a meta build that makes you go fast doesn't necessarily mean... That it's the best in terms of the actual RPG stuff. 
Hey Fally, how you doing dude? What's up man? Some encounter the elitists, yeah, that that too. Yeah, good timing to jinx it, brother. Thanks. I mean, I don't believe in jinxing, so it's fine, but still. She was Malenia. I don't know if she was a blade though, because I didn't get to see any blades. With Malenia's remembrance, I finally have access to the last piece of the Godskin Duoski puzzle, the Hand of Malenia. I trade the remembrance with Enya for the katana and warp to the Dragon Temple Grace. Oh, that was almost really bad. Exclamation mark pizza swap, it's a glitch, unfortunately. Doesn't work on current patch. Instead of entering the fight, I run around the temple to the back side from which I can see the Great Bridge. After some quitouts to reset the enemies, I get stuck in an animation, here an R1 attack with the Uchigatana, before queuing up its stunts. Then, before the stunts is executed, I swap the Uchi for the Devour Scepter, which normally allows the player to move for a brief moment before its skill is executed. The queued up stunts carries over, but this brief moment of movement glitches out and allows me to airwalk. Since my right hand has the hand of Malenia, I can continue the flight with the waterfowl dance and make it all the way over to the other side, skipping not just the Godskin duo, but primarily running around the entire Faramazula. But yeah, it won Game of the Year at the TGS, the Co Tokyo Game Show. Not the gaming awards, um, which are at the end of the year. Uh, TGA is basically gonna be between Ragnarok and this game, I think this game has to take it, but we'll see. Now, because the elevator leading to Plastidusax is at the bottom, it is slightly faster to run back up the stairs and use the Hunt of Malenia for another small skip. I simply use the skill to get out of bounds and then navigate down the rooftops while avoiding the surrounding kill planes. Oh, nice cancel. Times two, baby. Didn't get a cancel there, though. Yeah, bow being really good there. I mean, the problem is that it's just kind of difficult to get it consistently because the surface is super uneven. Like, both the stuff that you're jumping from and what you're landing on. When it comes to Cyberpunk, I mean, I guess it depends on what difficulty you play it. But, yeah, not every game is gonna be extremely difficult. Played Witcher 3 on Death March, and it was pretty fucking easy. On Malekith, it is possible to get a very precise time save by killing him so fast in Phase 1 that the second sentence of his opening monologue doesn't play out in time and carries over to Phase 2. If he's killed while still saying the sentence, his death speech doesn't play out and he dies faster, saving around 7 seconds. However, this needs the utmost precision when it comes to the speed of the pizza swap, the player's positioning, W-Tech consistency and of course, Malikath also needs to run at me, which is random. 
Unfortunately, I failed to collect this small time save here. Everything has been really fucking good in this run. But not this. Shit! I don't know if it was because I did the uh, pizza swap too slow. I don't know if it was... I think I dropped W tech there. I don't think it was as good as it could have been. Actually, what am I talking about? The start of this run is fucking shit. <laughs> I, I lost so much time on the right card split and also cross leg animation. It's actually, I uh, forgot about that. That was basically even with PB, which shouldn't happen. Decent Fias champs, though. Didn't lose any time over PB. Ah, dude, six seconds would have been nice. Well, doesn't matter. 100 was dead, anyways. Let's try to finish this strong. As I'm approaching the last few bosses, Gideon stands in the way. Killing him would be very quick with the pizza swap, but he talks an insane amount of smack after his death, so it's actually faster to run around the arena and skip him. For that, I use a little misplaced branch collision, followed by the skill of Loretta's sickle. This way I can scale up to the roof of the building Gideon is in and continue directly to Godfrey. The dialogue skip is actually pretty, uh, pretty difficult to do. Obviously it is RNG in the sense that you need Malekith to run towards you. If he doesn't then you cannot get dialogue skip, but you need to kill him fucking really really fast to get it. Like, why did that happen again, dude? Fuck me. <laughs> why has this skip become so difficult? And of course you go for the sickle, like, for the slash immediately in case you were actually gonna... Because it's possible that what can happen is you can slide down while you're there. So if you, like, stand there and don't go for the... for the fucking slash... You might slide down anyways. That wasn't a veteran move, you could say. With Godfrey dead, there are just two more pizza swaps between me and a new world record. Falling either of them would result in a certain death, but I think I managed to hold it together for once. Fuck. I'll just reset this point? Yeah, probably. Started bleeding time at the very end of the round, dude. This man. We are free, dude! This is free dumb! Ah, dude, bad time losses at the end, but I don't fucking care because the rest of the run was pretty rad. The rest of the run was really good. And Malekith dialogue skip is fucking stupid, and Gideon skip can suck my ass. Let's go, dude! 101! 14, man! Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Fuck this category! Let's fucking go, dude! Ah! I want to thank you for making it all the way to the end of the run. If you did, let me know in the comments below. The overall speedrun isn't perfect and has room for improvements. 
But understandably, pizza swapping all the bosses instead of fighting them regularly runs its course kinda quickly. The upside of this category is the consistency. It mostly comes down to the player's skill and also the fact that the Pegasus glitch cuts down the time spent running around considerably. However, when the game is made up of navigating around areas and killing bosses, and the latter part is completely nullified, the fun will disappear sooner rather than later. Still, I was happy to work on this category for a while and achieve this run. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'm currently pioneering an All Remembrances glitchless category over at my stream on Twitch. If you're interested in how that looks, give me a follow and hang out with us live. Until next time, thank you for watching and have a great day.